Hi, I'm Dan, and in this video, I'm going to go through eight power user features that you might not know about. Now, this is the second video in the series, so if you want to see some other power user features, there's going to be a link in the description to find out more. Otherwise, let's get stuck in. So the first is task lists. So right here, we've got a list of three items within the WYSIWYG editor. Within this little overflow menu, if we click on that, and we can click on this item with the check marks and that will format things to a task list like so. So I've got little check boxes next to each of them and I can click on these to mark them as checked. And you can only toggle the check status within the editor itself. So when you're viewing the page, that really remains read only, but you can come into the editor and check these off to show progress on something that you're tracking. And these have all the other abilities of lists within the editor. So I can add another item or maybe I can indent this one. And you don't have to have like a bullet list to start with at all. You can just have an item like that and format it as you would start a list normally. Now the next power user feature is related to attachments. So I've got an attachment here. It's a PDF related to donkeys, which is what this page is about. But while I can click here, which would download that PDF, you do have the option of clicking here to have a little drop down menu. And then you've got both download, which is the normal default behavior or open a new tab. I can click on that and then that gives me a URL that opens that directly in the browser. So this works with anything that the browser can show. So usually images and PDF files like this. And then if you wanted to, you could then take that link and then use that within your content itself. And because this is a proper bookstack attachment link, it does have permission control via the page that that attachment is uploaded to. Right now I power user feature for the editors. So within here, I'm in the WYSIWYG editor and I've got a little bit of content, but you can switch between the WYSIWYG and Markdown editors quite easily. So within the top draft menu here, if I click on that, then I've got a couple of options here. So I can switch the Markdown editor either with clean content or stable content. So clean tries to convert things and provide you with nice clean markdown syntax, but that's at a higher risk of losing certain formatting within your content. And then we also got stable content, which will essentially open it up and start using the markdown editor for this page. But by default, it won't try to convert things to clean markdown. You'll generally get HTML content instead. So if I go through an example of this, I'll switch to clean content. And we come up with this warning saying the potential risks of doing this. So this isn't something you want to quickly flick between. It's more that as a convenience. So if you want to switch a certain page to use the Markdown Editor instead, you can do so. But I'll continue through this. And now we're within the Markdown Editor and we've got quite nice clean Markdown syntax. So Markdown syntax for the heading, the text and the image here. But as you can see, this image has gone very large because we've lost that specific formatting that was in the old WYSIWYG content. And to show you a complete example, I'll jump back to the WYSIWYG Editor. And then I'll scale back down this large image and then we'll go through the process again, but using stable content. And we can see this time we've come into the markdown editor. The image hasn't blown up. It stayed the size that we set it, but the content here isn't clean markdown content is HTML content, but we can still come down here and then do additional normal markdown or we could look to convert this if we really wanted to and something to note to be able to change the editor like that while editing a page you will need to have a role that has this change page editor permission assigned now for this next one this isn't really like a feature specifically built in for this purpose but it's more a process idea that you can use to speed up creating your content within your book stack and that's just the idea of a book templates so for example here i've got this book and this is just a complete normal book and i've called it customer profile template and the idea is that you can use this as a basis for creating other books in the system so i've set this up with a couple of chapters and a page all quite generic what i might want in my customer profile and then what I could do, I could use permissions to say, OK, let's make sure that only the editors have permission to really touch this page. So we could give editors all permissions or we could just give them view permissions and then we'll remove any permissions for anyone else so they can't even see this book in the system. And we'll hit save. Then what we can do if an editor comes along and wants to then create a book from this template, they can come to this book and then just use the copy function. So there we go. I've set a name for a customer and then I'll hit copy book. And now we have a copy of that created with the same structure and the same content ready to go. All right now for power user feature number five, and this relates to sorting your book. So if I go to sort this book and then I'll add another book into the search, just so we've got some content to play with. Now this tip is that you can bulk sort content within this interface, specifically by using the typical shift and control clicking of the mouse to multi-select. So as an example, let's say I'll put these chapters last, but I want to move all of these pages into that other book. I can click there, but then shift click down to here 
and then I can drag those all in in one go. You don't have to do these one by one. And then it's as easy as that. I've just moved that whole bunch of pages into this book. And it should also be noted that this little overflow menu here or the end of each item has some quite useful little shortcuts here. So for example, we can move this to the end of the book if we wanted. So now I want to talk about interface shortcuts. Now these are configurable keyboard shortcuts that can allow you to navigate your system much more swiftly without having to take your hands off the keyboard. But you might have missed out on these because these aren't enabled by default. But we can get to the interface to activate these by going to your profile menu in the top right and then shortcuts. And then here we can check this box to enable keyboard shortcuts. And then down here is all the different shortcuts that are available and every one is customizable as well. So for example, if you wanted to change the shortcut for the home page, I can click in here and then I'll press control one to make that control one instead of just one. So now we've enabled in this change, we can save our preferences here and I can test this out by pressing control one. And there we go, it's taking me to the home page. But you don't have to memorize all those shortcuts within the other view. When shortcuts are enabled, you can press the question mark key on your keyboard to then show what shortcuts are available within the interface that you're currently seeing. So I'll press it now and we get this overlay. So as we configure the control ones for that, or we can do slash for search. And we've got these ones here. If we go into a more typical view, for example, for a page, I'll press the same thing. And you can see all these actions have their shortcuts overlaid. So I can press E to edit. And there we go, we're in the editor. So yeah, if you're a really keyboard focused power user, that should be really helpful for you. Now back to our donkeys page, I want to talk about content references. So this was added not too long ago to Bookstack. If we have a look on the right hand side here within the details for this page, we can see this item referenced on two pages. So if we can click on that, then we can see the two other pages in our system that have references to that donkeys page. So if I click one of these to double check, we can see, yep, there we go. We've got a link to our donkeys page there. And this doesn't just track links from pages to pages. It also tracks links to pages from any other items within the content hierarchy hierarchy as well. For example, if we go back to our donkeys page and then go up to the book, we can see this also has the same thing. This is a reference on the one page and that's the review notes that we just were also looking at. So this is really just a little helpful thing to show you what other content in your system might be linking to the specific item that you're looking at. But Bootstack itself does use these references in the background for a little bit more just to do some smart things. As an example, if we're looking at that animals link here that goes to our animal book, if you look down in the very bottom left corner, that's currently linking to animal hyphen content as a slug in the URL. So if we go to there, we can see that here. If I edit this book and then update the name to my animal content and hit save. So the URL is changed here, my animal content, the reference has remained. So if I click through on that reference and then go to that page, just link into the book, we can see this URL here has changed to my animal content. I'll click on that and then it takes us to the right place. And it's done the same for the pages within that as well, because they would have also had their URLs changed. So yeah, Bookstack uses that references system to kind of manage URLs and might possibly do other things with that in the future. If you haven't seen this system come into play at all and you've got a lot of links in your system and you're someone that's been using Bookstack for quite a while, it might be the case that your reference index just hasn't been built because this wouldn't apply to old pages until you perhaps updated them. But what you can do, if you go to the maintenance page, which is what we're looking at here, you can scroll to the bottom, click the button, and this will regenerate that references index, and then therefore update that index with all your old content. Now, lastly, this feature is quite a minor feature, but it might help someone. So we're looking at the login page here, but what you can do with the normal login page, at least for an email login, you can add in the URL a email parameter, and then set that to the value of an email address to pre-fill in on this form. So if you're in a scenario where you commonly go to your Bookstack instance and you have to type out the email every time and it's super annoying, what you can do instead is set this parameter in the URL to be your email address and then bookmark that as your bookmark to your Bookstack instance. And that way, every time you go to it, or at least to the login screen, it will be pre-filled with the right email address ready to go. All right, and that's everything that I've got for this video. As I said at the start, this is the second in the series. If you like these features and you want to find out more and you didn't catch our first video, there's a link in the description. Otherwise, I hope these power up your Bookstack usage and I hope you have a wonderful day.